All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how finance firms can deliver database changes quicker while keeping data safe. Uh, as you all know, the financial services industry has come a long way over the past five years on the journey of becoming more agile and is now leading the charge when it comes to speeding up innovation and adopting modern software delivery practices such as DevOps and continuous integration, continuous delivery. Although the industry was once seen as one of the slower adopters, executives are now recognizing that DevOps is a great way to roll out value to the market while also addressing governance, risk, security, and compliance strategies. DevOps allows financial services to enhance the quality and cadence of application delivery by releasing faster, more efficiently, and more safely. Uh, but you're missing a trick if you're not including the database in these plans, right? And that's what we're here to talk about today. So just a couple of housekeeping items before we uh, continue. So all the attendees uh, will be on mute during the webinar, uh, but we want to hear your questions. So if you have any during the course of this presentation, uh, please enter them in the question box on the GoToWebinar panel, and we'll make sure we leave plenty of time at the end of the webinar to go through them. This webinar is also being recorded, so uh, we'll follow up with a copy of the recording, as well as the slides over the next couple of days. Now, like, let's get started with some introductions and an overview of what you, you can expect from today's webinar. Uh, my name is Arne Skandari, and I'm the head of pre-sales engineering for the North America region here at Redgate. Uh, I've been with the company for just over seven years, and as part of my role, I've helped hundreds of organizations implement DevOps best practices and also streamline their delivery process across both their applications and their databases. Um, in the finance sector, sector specifically, I've worked with fintech startups to large financial institutions within the Fortune 100 and everything in between. So I'm pretty familiar with some of the challenges that uh, these organizations face and how they differ from other industries, such as tackling complex legacy databases, you know, silo teams, bureaucracy, and strict regulations, just to name a few. So here's my contact info, so please feel free to reach out if you have any questions after our webinar today. So as I mentioned briefly before, financial firms are under increasing pressure to release software faster in order to continue delivering value to their customers and also remain competitive. So adopting DevOps practices is a great way of achieving this. We know that companies who adopt DevOps significantly increase the speed of their delivery, but in today's webinar, we'll address how extending DevOps practices to the database uh, can not only increase the speed of delivery, but also ensure your data is protected and that you remain compliant throughout your uh, development process too. So just a quick overview of Redgate. So for those of you who are not familiar with the company, we've been around for just over 18 years and our key focus is helping companies improve the quality and efficiency of their database change management and delivery. And we primarily focus on SQL Server and Oracle platform. Uh, we have over 200,000 uh, customers from 91% of Fortune 100, as well as startups, global organizations, and everything in between. Uh, Redgate also has a big presence in the community by sharing best practices, learnings, helping to solve problems with, uh, with the database community through our primary hubs, SQL Server Central, and Simple Talk, which most of you are already familiar with. We also do sponsor a lot of uh, free events, such as SQL Saturdays, DevOps Days, and, and so on. Uh, at Redgate, we have a huge focus on continuous delivery and improvement ourselves um, to our product. Uh, so as you can see here on our slide, we've had over 1,000 major and minor product releases last year alone, uh, which is a number that is increasing year on year. All right, now let's start off by exploring some of the key trends and challenges in the financial services industry and why DevOps practices are being adopted to tackle them. Uh, a lot of financial organizations didn't start online, obviously, and uh, they're busy modernizing back-end processes and systems to support today's digital age. This, this includes overcoming issues with legacy systems and, and code, uh, for example. Now, despite this, the speed of innovation and technological change required to succeed in this competitive market is huge. Um, as you can see here in PwC's 19th annual global CEO survey, they found that over 80% of banking CEOs are concerned about the speed of technological change, more than uh, any other industry, actually. Um, these findings were mirrored in Venture Partner Survey, who found that the CISO's biggest priorities and 
most strategic initiatives were around establishing a data-driven culture, uh, finding new avenues for innovation and creating more products and services. No doubt these demands are being uh, trickled down to your IT team too. Um, the financial services industry has actually seen drastic technology-led changes over the past few years. Many ex executives look at their IT departments to reduce costs, drive efficiency, maintain availability, and improve performance uh, of their systems. Meanwhile, you have fintech startups uh, who are encroaching, uh, uh, encroaching upon established markets, leading with customer-friendly solutions, developed from the ground up without having the challenge of legacy systems that the more established uh, organizations have to deal with. Uh, as, well as, this, as well as this, you have customers uh, who have their expectations set by other industries and are now demanding better services seamless experiences regardless of channel and more value for their money from the financial organizations. Um, on the other hand, regulators demand more from the industry too and have started to adopt new technologies that would revolutionize their ability to collect and analyze information. And the pace of changes shows no sign of slowing either. So this is putting huge pressure on financial institutions in general to increase the speed of software uh, releases and DevOps practices vital to, to these goals. Uh, the second key challenge I want to discuss in, is the increasing volume of data that we have to deal with on a daily basis. For financial services companies, you're faced with challenges of securing larger and larger volumes of sensitive information, while also adhering to regulations in order to protect yourself from data breaches and preserves your uh, reputation for trustworthiness. So the next few years are critical time for data-driven organizations. The sheer quantities of information uh, are expanding, as we all know, uh, so rapidly that companies that don't know how to process and analyze this information will simply fall by the wayside. ID research and advisory company uh, that don't know how to process and analyze this information will simply fall by the wayside. Uh, IT research and advisory company IDC predicts that by 2025, humans will generate 180 zettabytes of data every year. Uh, as the amount of data grows exponentially and the internet changes to accommodate this explosive growth, new industry regulations will follow close behind. We already see the recent uh, introductions of the GDPR in the EU, EU for example. Um, even financial services organizations that are conscious of the current state of regulations need to remain flexible and agile so they can quickly react and respond to this shift in the industry landscape. Uh, in the years ahead, change will come both in the form of new regulations as well as amendments to the existing ones. And in addition to that, financial services have to address the change uh, of their state of their data. Data frequency obviously moves from being in use to in motion, to at rest, and back again. Uh, and what's more is companies constantly generate new data that they need to combine with their existing data stores. Uh, as information changes from one state to another and moves locations, it becomes more difficult to apply data security methods throughout the system. And organizations that don't use the right tools will be unable to guarantee they can protect their information from end to end, uh, which can cause serious conflicts when it comes to data regulatory compliance uh, the majority of companies will see the best result by adopting a data-centric approach by encrypting and safeguarding their information, and this includes uh, through the development processes that we're going to talk about uh, next. So going back to my first point, extending DevOps practices to the database. So DevOps itself requires the database to be included because the faster development of applications means databases also need to be updated more frequently, obviously. Uh, with the need for database and application development to be much more aligned, more and more teams are responsible for both areas of development. Uh, so uh, the 2018 da Database DevOps Survey, uh, which is a survey that was per, uh, done by Redgate showed that 76% of application developers are also now responsible for database development. So uh, they have been brought into the database fold because front and back end development are now much more closely connected. So with separate, separate tooling and different development processes, however, the deployment of database changes often become a bottleneck, uh, hindering the speed of change which DevOps can otherwise bring. Hence, new software has emerged which integrates with and plugs into the same infrastructure used for developing applications. Uh, as you can see in this diagram, uh, this streamlines database development and enables it to uh, be included 
uh, in the processes like version control, continuous integration, and uh, release management, making deployments faster, easier, and far less prone to, to errors. Uh, my second fo uh, point focused on ensuring DevOps processes are secure, um, which a term uh, Gartner uses along with many other uh, many who are calling it DevSecOps. Uh, in Gartner's October 2017 report on 10 things to get right for successful DevSecOps, they predicted that by 2021, DevSecOps practices will be embedded in 80% of rapid development teams, uh, which is up from 15% back in 2017, which is a huge jump. Uh, the report suggests enterprises take 10 steps to protect applications during development. After the webinar, we'll follow up with a copy of Redgate's new white paper, which discusses these same 10 steps for DevSecOps and how they can be applied to the databases to ensure compliant DevOps. Uh, some of which we're going to discuss shortly today. So while there have been a number of people who have said that the speed of change associated with DevOps can be seen as a risk to data security, 63% of the people we asked in Redgate's recent database DevOps survey said a DevOps approach to the database is in fact a, a, a positive impact on compliance requirements. This is likely because DevOps introduces managed processes that actually simplify compliance by enabling software to be delivered in a consistent, reliable, and re repeatable way, and by providing an audit trail of all the changes made that are made uh, to, to your databases. As expected, the number of people who think DevOps has a positive impact on compliance rises in organizations operating in more regulated environments, such as financial services and insurance. Now, interestingly, the percentage also varies significantly between those who have already adopted a DevOps approach for some or all of their projects, which is at uh, 69%, and those who have not uh, and don't have any plans to implement it, which is at 30%. Uh, this strongly suggests that those organizations that implement DevOps practices are finding DevOps to be good for compliance. Now, given this, it's no surprise that Gartner predict the growth of DevSecOps in the years to come, as you saw in the previous slide. So it's clear that DevSecOps or compliant DevOps is growing and the need for faster delivery and increased security is not going away. It's also been proven that extending DevOps practices to the database has a positive impact on regulatory and compliance requirements. So what you see here is Redgate's preferred database uh, DevOps process, which encompasses both the priorities we discussed earlier. So the need for increased releases by standardizing your team-based development and automating your database deployment, while also ensuring your personal identifiable information uh, stays secure by monitoring performance and availability and protecting and preserving data. So obviously, you know, with, you can see here with databases, as you know, we deal with data. So how do we, you know, bring that data into our whole DevOps process for development and testing purposes, but also keeping the, uh, the personal and sensitive data secure, which is what we're going to talk about later on today as well. So finance companies who are adopting compliant databases DevOps are seeing the value of faster releases and improved compliance. For example, Abza Bank, a wholly owned subsidiary of the Barclays Africa Group, offers a range of retail, business, corporate, and investment banking, as well as wealth management products and services, primarily in South Africa. Uh, they have a team of 40 developers who support the bank's payment processing system and handle 3,000 high-value transactions per day. To enable, to, to enable them to work faster and more effectively, the bank has two key, key technology objectives. One is to establish DevOps working practices and introduce automation where possible. Um, and the overall goal is to improve accuracy and therefore minimize risk at the same time as reducing the time uh, uh, for their releases. The previous database de deployment process was pretty manual for, for these teams. Um, so they would make changes, comp compile their deployment scripts manually, save them to a directory, and then handing them over to their operations team to be reviewed and to be deployed to a higher environment, uh, all of which took a lot of time and occasionally caused problems with their, with their deployments. So to improve this process, Abza kicked up an initiative to drive forward database automation, in particular continuous integration 
and automated deployments. So by adopting DevOps uh, for databases, they've been able to improve the productivity of the teams and also improve accuracy, delivering value faster and more securely uh, to their customers. So now let's talk about the, uh, the four key areas of com compliant DevOps and how leading financial service organizations have benefited from, from these techniques. So the first step of achieving compliant database DevOps is by standardizing team-based development, which is the same as you know, uh, implementing DevOps for, for any application uh, project. So saving time in database development by using consistent tools for coding, comparison and version control, and ensure all of your team are working from a single version of truth with an audit trail of database changes and the foundations for automated build process. So source controlling is really at the heart of DevOps. And if you're not doing that, then uh, you, you're not even ready to look at any other uh, aspects of DevOps either. So it's very important to get used to source controlling our database changes and uh, using the same source controlling strategies that we do for our application code already. So, uh, so there are actually few key uh, elements to this. So one is standardizing your coding styles and implementing static code analysis on your database changes, uh, where there is a number of benefits to this. So one is more effective team working, smoother code integration, and more reliable deployments because you're, you're testing your changes and making sure that you're adhering to, to best, best practices. And as a result, you get more predictable performance in production and fewer maintenance headaches and less unplanned work, to name just a few. All of these benefits contribute to greater product productivity, which has a dramatic impact on the number of deployments, lead time, and also recovery from failures uh, when it comes to your databases. The other key item is uh, comparing, being able to compare your database schemas, right? So you can explore what's changed in each database object down to the individual lines of SQL. Uh, when you're ready to deploy, you can easily create an error-free deployment script in minutes instead of relying on developers to uh, save off their handwritten scripts uh, and also having to deal with the ordering issues that we typically come across when it comes to database changes. And finally, version control, which is obviously a standard uh, process in the application development and involves developers checking their changes into a common repository during the development process, preferably, preferably multiple times a day or at least at the end of uh, the day, working day. So as a direct re result, everyone has access to the latest version of the application and it is always clear what was changed, when it was changed, and who changed it through your source control repository. Uh, this is just as true for the database code, as I mentioned, which can also be version controlled, preferably by integrating with and plugging into the same version control system that you use for your application. So whether, whether it's Git, you know, TFS, Subversion, or any other source control system that you might be utilizing already. So um, in the same uh, uh, report from Redgate State of Database DevOps, we asked people what practices were in place for the application versus their database. Now you'll notice here uh, in the graph on the screen that 81% of people had version control in place for the application, but only 53% had the same in place for the database. Unsurprisingly, unsurprisingly there is significantly more third-party tooling in place for application than for database. In fact, 61% of people have a third-party tool in place for their application and only 39% for their databases. So if these figures look familiar and represent what's going on in your organization, you'll likely want to address it uh, if you're going to increase the speed of delivery and also ensure you are remaining compliant uh, when it comes to your database processes. So Republic Bank is actually another good example of a financial organization where modern development practices are implemented across both their applications and databases. They're headquartered in Louisville and have grown to become one of the largest Kentucky-based banks and one of the most stable community banks in North America with banking centers in a number of different states. So as Republic Bank approaches the 1,000 employee mark, 10% of the people uh, in the business are in IT and it is of strategic importance to the bank that they stay ahead of the curve and deliver values to the business and customers quickly. Uh, a good example is database deployments, which used to involve writing scripts by hand, which were then reviewed by multiple people. This was hugely time-consuming and error-prone, and often meant 
the person in the team became a bottleneck for the delivery. So to resolve this issue, uh, Chris Yates and his team introduced Redgate SQL Compare. So Republic are now releasing database changes over 500 times a year, and with SQL Compare, the process has become standard working practice. All the database code is in version control, uh, and once changes from different development branches are merged, SQL Compare is used to perform the comparison of what they have in source control to their target environment to generate the deployment script for review and also the execution of the script against their environment. Reviewing all of the code in one place is much easier and reduces both complexity and the risk of error, resulting in far less system downtime. Because SQL Compare makes it easy for anyone in the team to pick up a release, run it, and move on, everyone in the team is freed up to spend time on other valuable tasks as a result. Following the success of SQL Compare, the team at Republic Bank have also adopted other Redgate tools from the SQL tool belt uh, across the DBA development BI and QA teams, including SQL Prompt, SQL Search, and SQL Doc to better document their, uh, the schema of their databases. Successfully establishing a semi-automated process for database deployments put them in a great position to take the next step towards full data, database automation, where, it can, where they can actually run, build, continuous integration against their databases uh, like they do for their application, and also be able to put their changes through a release management process uh, alongside the application code. So once you have team using the same tools and practices uh, across application and databases, you can start thinking about automation. So removing bottlenecks during database delivery with a consistent, scalable, and repeatable process to automate your deployments. Adopt best practices like database continuous integration and release management to find and resolve errors earlier for fast, low-risk deployments. Every time a change is committed to version control, for example, a continuous integration process can be triggered, which tests the changes and flags up any errors or any invalid objects in your database or your code. Uh, the errors can be fixed immediately as a result because they're detected early. And once those are fixed, you can put them back into source control and run your continuous integration process again to make sure that all of your changes are valid and uh, your database can be built successfully. Uh, this way, the same discipline can be applied to every process that is automated and all code changes are tested before they are deployed to ensure production environment is never compromised. Many application developers already use continuous integration, and I'm sure some of you already do that, to automatically test your code and release management tools to automate your application deployments. Database developers can join them uh, as, as a result and achieve continuous delivery for databases. Uh, continuous delivery extends DevOps thinking uh, from software development through to deployment. Rather than regarding the release of a software as a separate activity, continuous delivery means software is always ready for releases. And you, instead of doing you know, big bang releases or scheduled releases, you should be able to just, just release changes to your target environment uh, you know, multiple times a day. Uh, additional data management and monitoring processes may be required to safeguard your data and uh, we'll discuss that next. But the broader benefit of continuous delivery gained by standardizing your deployment processes through automation remains the same for the database. So by automating owner's processes so they are quick, reliable, and predictable, makes it easier to deliver software faster and also makes dealing with compliance more straightforward. With automation, you're less likely to introduce human error, tests are more efficient, and you can cover more ground and your process is more consistent and predictable, helping you retain control and giving you more time to react should a security flaw take place. So let's look back at the, uh, the graphs I showed you earlier. Again, you notice that automation is significantly higher for the application than for the database. Where you look at third-party tooling again, a huge difference between those who are using automated testing for their application, which is at 39%, and those who are doing the same for databases, which is currently at 15%. So there is definitely a big gap between the best practices that people utilize on the application code side and the practices that they utilize on the database side of things. So we know the financial service industry is under increasing pressure to release software faster. And you can see that here. 
whether from new entrants to the market, such as mobile-only banks, or the likes of Apple and Google entering the mobile payment space, uh, or increased investment in fintech startups. Traditional financial institutions, whether small trading firms or global banks, need to increase speed of delivery if they are going to survive. This is clear from our, our uh, same report again, which shows that a key driver for automating the delivery of database changes as part of your wider DevOps process is the need to increase speed of delivery of database changes alongside the application code. So another great example is uh, AFA Insurance, who provides a range of insurance policies and financial support to over 4 million employees in both the public and private sector. Keeping all of that technology performing at optimum efficiency is the biggest challenge for them. And they wanted to look at ways of replacing manual processes and introducing automation to database deployments. They realized they were missing out by not having database version control in place to start with. While it was standard practice for their application code, they felt they were lagging behind by not adopting the same approach for managing their database changes. Having taken the first step to actively managing that lifecycle of their databases, the team wanted to go even further and automate the deployment process too. But again, going back to what I mentioned earlier, starting with source control is is the, the key foundational piece. So if you're not source controlling, then there is no uh, point in looking at um, you know, automated deployments. So every check into source control triggers an automated continuous integration process. So any issues are caught early. If everything builds as expected, then changes are automatically promoted across their environments, including their production environment. With deployments happening in development rather than operations, it speed up the entire process and has freed up the production database administrators who now work on optimizing performance instead of handling time and sense and error per manual deployments and lengthy reviews of my, uh, migration scripts. As well as increasing the number of deployments, the team at AFA have seen substantial time saving, free, freeing up the equivalent of an additional team member as a result of um, adopting DevOps. Next, we look at monitoring. So once upon a time, a data breach was considered to be an event when a third party had gained unauthorized access to health data. However, with the introduction of rules around the right to be forgotten, we now have to add this, uh, the fact that an event when you lose access to your own data should also be considered as a breach and the predefined response should be followed. So both these situations rely on our ability to have real-time information on the state and activities of our database environment, or more specifically, database monitoring. By monitoring your database, you can detect, diagnose, and resolve performance problems before they impact your customers or before your servers go down. You can continuously optimize your processes by identifying common causes of operational and performance issues, including deployments, and monitor status of availability groups to aid reporting and disaster recovery and minimize downtime on your servers. Recently, we carried out, carried out another uh, survey called the State of SQL Server Monitoring. Uh, with increased data protection legislations like the GDPR, it's no surprise that security and protection is at the top of the list. But given that almost 50% of our respondents are already deploying changes multiple times a week, and almost no one expected the frequency of those deployments to decrease. So what are challenges, uh, what are the challenges you and your SQL uh, Server face over the next year? Consider including monitoring as part of your solution. It can only make your life easier. 50% of people say security is a key daily responsibility, and GDPR ranks highest on the list of security and protection challenges. But interestingly, the majority of people are still firefighting rather than proactive monitoring. So with the right monitoring tool in place, for example, you can catch deployment errors, diagnose issues faster, and prevent them from recurring, uh, track and plan a growing state, and even catch unexpected or unauthorized access to your uh, servers or your database servers. So from that same survey, uh, we can see that most frequently cited causes of problems was bad deployments. It is vital for financial organizations to reduce downtime. The cost of an unplanned outage in the financial services industry is more than two and a half times higher compared to other industries, according to the research from Gartner. Uh, some sources, sources say it's at $110,000 per hour on average. 
So in the ever competitive industry, today's financial institutions can afford these costly mistakes as a result. Uh, so adopted Dev DevOps practices has been proven to significantly reduce downtime with high IT performance having 96 times faster mean time to recovery uh, than low performance. So uh, another good example of a company who is now more proactive on monitoring the state of their service is uh, Fiducia, who provides the systems that powers 36,000 ATMs and over 80 million banks accounts in Germany. Last year, they implemented Redgate SQL Monitor to better manage the performance of their growing SQL Server state, delivering better customer satisfaction and driving growth for the business. Uh, but with a further 150 servers expected in 2018, the DBAs were forced to consider hiring more people or otherwise invest in third-party tooling. Since implementation, uh, the company has been able to scale operations at an un unprecedented rate. Uh, they have introduced 150 new servers this year and 70 to 80 new applications so far. Managing this increase in servers would typically require additional support or jeopardize quality, right? So, but however, Redgate Solution has enabled the DBA team to remain the same size while also quickly alerting them to performance issues and allowing them their team to be more proactive. The team has more knowledge and confidence as a result that they are delivering the highest standards of service their customers expect. And finally, the, the final stage to achieving compliant DevOps or database DevOps is protecting sensitive data as it moves through your database environment to safeguard against data breaches and unauthorized access. Uh, and also give your team access to reliable data for development and testing without risking exposure of sensitive or personally identifiable information. In Gartner's 10 things to get right for successful DevSecOps report, they recommended not trying to eliminate every vulnerability in application development. This is valid because runtime protection controls like uh, intrusion prevention system and web application firewalls also exist and addressing every small concern would hinder development. Uh, this isn't the case with data, however, uh, where data has been identified as sensitive and at risk by credit card details, access must be limited and it cannot be widely shared. Developers, however, often need a copy of production database in their development or even their testing or QA environments in order to ensure changes will work once deployed to their production environment. So in research, uh, recent research we conducted at Redgate, we uh, wanted to identify how organizations currently provision databases and to assess the importance of provisioning requirements to ensure adherence to these emerging data protection obligations. We gathered responses from nearly 500 data professionals from a wide range of job roles and from a variety of industries. Now, you can see here one of the findings on the screen, uh, software teams want to use production data. And obviously, this is no surprise. Uh, it's more predictable, more reliable, but it also is not compliant, right? So given this need for production data, uh, this next stat that you see here may not come as a surprise either. But the numbers are quite shocking. 72% of people uh, use a direct copy of production in their development test or QA environments. And um, interestingly, those who were restricted from using production data were mainly due to the data sensitivity and regulatory requirements. But with increasing regulations, organizations are having to take more caution uh, with how data is used and who has access to it. So one solution is to have a version of the production database with a limited data set of anonymous data, right? Which is always used to develop and test against. However, this does mean changes are tested against a database that is neither realistic nor of a size where the impact of performance can be assessed in comparison to the size of data that you might have in production. Um, another solution is to take a copy of the production database and mask the data manually by replacing columns with similar but generate data. This copy can then be used in development and testing, which is totally fine, but it will age very quickly as ongoing changes are deployed to your production database and as new data is added to your production environment. So this is where data masking measures like pseudonymization, encryption, anonymization, and aggression should be adopted uh, in your database practices. 
So Redmi SQL provision uh, supports a database DevOps approach while keeping compliance central to the process. Uh, with the virtual cloning technology in SQL clone, which is part of uh, SQL provision, databases can be created within a matter of seconds using just megabytes of storage, allowing for isolated development and testing uh, sensitive data that can be anonymized or replaced with realistic data using the data masker component of our SQL provision to ensure the data is protected as it moves between your environments and with the single central management system for your provisioning, the entire process is simple, re repeatable, transparent, and auditable. And we've seen from earlier slide of the research that we conducted on SQL database provisioning, 83% of responses agree or strongly agree that it is desirable to use production data in development and testing. And now they can continue to do so, knowing that data security, regulatory compliance, and storage concerns have been accommodated. Provisioning database copies is a constant requirement for one of Redgate's clients, Moody's Analytics. They are a subsidiary of Moody's Corporation, offering capital markets and risk management professionals worldwide with unique tools and best practices for measuring and managing risk through expertise and experience in credit analysis, economic research, and financial risk management. So they use our SQL provision, particularly for their test engineers who need to create several, several fresh database copies each day from production to run the required database integration and system tests. Having adopted our SQL provision, anyone in the team can self-serve a clone copy of the database from production in a matter of seconds, and it has contributed significantly to the speed and efficiency of their database development and testing processes overall. Um, as a result, this gives the team and the business a lot more confidence in the reliability of the new features that they deliver to their end users. So this concludes the, the four key areas that we wanted to talk about today to help you implement a compliant DevOps process for your databases. So let's quickly go over those four key topics and the tools from Redgate that can help. So we started talking about standardizing your team-based de uh, de development and, and deployment process. So um, let's see if I can show that here. So, um, so tools such as Redgate SQL Source Control, SQL Prom, SQL Test, SQL Doc, these are the tools that you can be utilized uh, to help you start source controlling your database changes and also uh, follow you know, static code analysis and, and uh, standardized coding styles and syntax uh, across your team to, to improve the efficiency of your development process for your databases. And then we also talked about automating database deployments. So using tools like SQL Change Automation, you can easily uh, implement continuous integration and continuous de delivery tasks and processes that sit well with your application code and uh, can be delivered alongside your application code as a, as a result. We also talk about monitoring your performance and your availability. So using tools like SQL Monitor and SQL Backup, you can easily monitor the state of your databases, be alerted as soon as something goes wrong before your you know, customers or your end users find out. And finally, protecting and preserving your data. So using tools like SQL Provision, which has SQL clone and data masking built into it, you can easily provision copies of your databases down to lower environments without being worried about you know, sensitive data getting leaked out to your lower environments uh, or your non-secure environments. And that can help actually with a couple of things. So with databases, for example, we know that working with shared development databases is a very common uh, uh, practice. So this can actually help you move away from that and be able to easily provide your developers with their own copy of the database that they can work with. And they change, uh, check their changes into source control and collaborate through source control with other developers as opposed to collaborating through a shared development uh, database. All right, so uh, now let's uh, move on to, to, to questions. So uh, looks like there's a, there's a couple of questions here. So uh, one of the questions is, how, uh, how do financial uh, organizations typically start with implementing DevOps for databases? There's a lot of things that looks like needs to be changed. Um, so 
absolutely correct and a really good point. So uh, what we normally typically recommend as far as where to get started is to, is to look at your processes to begin with. So look at what your current processes are, you know, what the culture is like, what, what team members you have, what the skills, what kind of skills you have within the team uh, before you even look at any third party tooling. So look at your processes and make sure that you have the right skills internally to be able to, uh, you know, do source control to be able to implement a continuous integration process or continuous delivery process and kind of go from there. Once you've done that, then um, uh, kind of identify the the ideal, uh, you know, uh, process for you. So what, what would the ideal process look like uh, with DevOps? Uh, and then once we've done that, then you can uh, figure out what the right process would be uh, and what kind of tooling you would need to use. Uh, as I said, starting with source control is always, uh, the best uh, approach because you know that's that's the the foundation of DevOps and the first thing you need to do is to make sure source control becomes your source of truth. So starting with source control, uh, make sure that everyone understands the source control strategy that you want to put in place for your databases and uh, and kind of go from there. And then once you've done that, once you understand your source controlling strategy and and uh, what should go into source control, then uh, automating your build, validating the changes that go into source control, it should be pretty straightforward by implementing a build process and a continuous integration and deployment process going to your higher environments. Okay, so uh, another question here. So let's let me let me expand the questions pane here real quick so I can see all of this. So two questions. So we have a requirement to document our SQL Server agent jobs. Is this something you are looking at adding into SQL Doc? And secondly, can you make custom alerts in SQL Monitor for measuring that um, a box insert has added the right data uh, from some logic you write yourself? So going back to your uh, first question, so for those of you who are not familiar with SQL Doc, so SQL Doc is our documentation tool that you point to a given database and that just documents all the objects that you have in your database, the content of those objects, and also the dependencies between your tables and, and other objects or or between tables. So so the answer is, is no. So we have, uh, I don't think there is a plan on uh, adding SQL Server agent jobs to SQL Doc primarily because SQL doc works at the database level and not the server level. However, we do have a tool um, as part of our uh, data privacy suite uh, called SQL State Manager, which actually does keep track of, uh, you know, what agent jobs you have at the server level, permissions, and everything else uh, on your SQL server. So the way that that tool works is that it takes snapshots of your SQL Server state, and as part of those snapshots, it tells you what agent jobs you have, you know, what permissions, what security settings, properties against your databases, what databases, and and so on. So it gives you a very detailed uh, overview of what your databases and your servers contain at any given point, and you can you can schedule those snapshots so you can get it to uh, uh, take a snapshot on nightly basis or whatever frequency that makes sense to you. And you can also compare those snapshots to see, for example, what's changed, uh, you know, uh, in between those snapshots, whether, you know, your agent jobs have changed or agent jobs have been added or whatever the case is or the difference is, you'll be able to easily identify those through SQL State Manager, which is part of our data privacy suite again. Now, going back, uh, going to your second question, uh, asking if we can uh, make a custom alert in SQL Monitor for measuring that a bulk insert has added uh, the right data. So um, with SQL Monitor, uh, there is the option to add custom alerts through custom metrics. So a custom metric is basically a SQL query that you can run that returns a numeric value uh, as a result. So if you can write a SQL that would basically uh, achieve the, the, the desired outcome or return the desired output uh, in, in, form, in a number format, then you can easily go ahead and add that as a custom metric in SQL Monitor and then set up also alerts on that custom metric as well uh, and be alerted when the number uh, goes above or below the threshold that you've set. 
But other than that, there is no other way to 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 achieve this in SQL Monitor. So if if it's something that can be done through a SQL query that returns a number, then you can save that as a custom metric and and utilize that that way inside SQL Monitor. Okay. So um, so. Uh, those were the, the questions that were posted on our uh, questions panel. So, uh, so that means that this concludes our webinar today. So we can uh, give 15 minutes of your day back to you. Uh, so again, uh, if you guys have any questions uh, regarding what we talked about today uh, or anything else, uh, feel free to contact us. Uh, here is our email address, devops at red-gate.com. Uh, you also saw my contact details earlier on. Uh, so feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help. Again, thanks everyone for your time uh, and hope you have a good rest of the day.